다음은 특별 대담입니다. 예산 교착과 연금 적자로 큰 어려움에 처한 일리노이의 상황에 대해 레슬리지 먼거 일리노이 회계감사관을 인터뷰했습니다. 정혜경 아나운서입니다. 웰컴 투 윈티비 컨트롤러 먼거 Thank you. Very happy to be here today. Now let's talk about the most important topic here, the budget impasse. Can you outline how much trouble the state of Illinois fell into? Well, we have very serious financial problems in the state right now. And I think it's important for everyone to understand that this is not, uh, these problems that we have today are not a result of one year without a budget. Uh, or one year with a new governor. Uh, these are decades in the making, and really uh, both parties and lots of people have a hand in creating the mess that we're in today. Uh, and I think I say that because it's really important for people to remember we didn't get into this overnight. We're not going to get out of the problem overnight, but we need to start on a good path. Uh, we currently uh, are in beginning our 10th month of our fiscal year without a budget in place. And as a result, we are running our state based on court orders uh, that direct us to pay for certain expenses. We are paying about 90% of what the state is typically funds in a year via these court orders, but we're spending at a rate that is exceeding the money that we have coming in, so we are building a lot of debt. We currently in the state have about $7 billion of bills that we have no money to pay. Uh, we have a portion of uh, things in our state that include our four-year universities, community colleges, uh, student MAP grants, a number of social services that don't fall under any of these court orders. We can't make any payments to them right now. Uh, I have no legal authority to make those payments. That's, that total is about another $2.5 billion worth of bills that we will have to pay. When we get a budget in place, we'll owe that money. And um, everyone has heard a lot about in the news over the past many uh, months about our unfunded pension liability. Uh, in total in the state right now, that is uh, a little bit over $110 billion. These are, these, this is pensions that will be owed that we do not have the money to make those, pay, the, those payments. Uh, and we have about $100 million in any given day to make payments with. Now, I think these numbers are really large, and I think most people don't have any idea, really, when you hear billions and millions, how much trouble the state is in. So I've found it helpful to get these numbers down to something we could understand in our own homes or businesses by taking six zeros off of all the numbers I just shared with you. Um, so I, I like you to imagine if you were sitting down to pay your own bills and you looked in your bank account, you would see you had $100 because, as I said, we have about $100 million. So if you take six zeros off of that, it gets you to $100. Uh, you would look at bills you had piled up before you on your kitchen table waiting to be paid. You would see bills of over $7,000 in front of you. Uh, you knew you'd spent more money. This is our unfunded part of our government. Uh, but you just didn't have those bills in your hand yet, but you were going to owe that money when those bills showed up. You would have bills expected uh, in the mail of over another $2,500. And if you opened up your credit card statement and you looked at what you had to pay on our unfunded pension liabilities, and we, you would have to make a monthly payment on that just like you do on your credit card bill, uh, you would see a total bill of over $110,000 and you have $100. You know, are, are you gonna look at that $100 and think that you have money to go spend? Or are you gonna be worried about you losing your home, uh, your electricity being turned off, or losing your business, how you're gonna pay your mortgage? Uh, this is what the state faces every day. We have essentially $100 to pay thousands of dollars worth of bills. We know that the governor and the Democrats must come to work together Right. Ideally speaking. But in your opinion, uh, what would be short-term treatment and long-term solution for this budget crisis? We, um, when we hear these numbers and, and how bad it is, I think it's easy for us to forget that um, 
you know, there is a way out. And we've had difficult financial problems before, although this is among the largest that we've had in our state and in a long time. Um, really, the first thing we have to do is get a, bu a balanced budget in place. And this is going to require our legislature and our governor coming together and everyone giving something uh, in, to, in putting the state and Illinoisans first uh, before their own political aspirations and, and coming up with a solution. Uh, we hear uh, some people say that we just need to raise taxes. Uh, I will tell you that we cannot raise taxes enough anymore to solve this simply by raising taxes. We would have to take our tax rate in Illinois from 3.75% where it is now, that's our Illinois state income tax rate. We would have to more than double it to somewhere between 7 and 8% if we only look at taxes. And I think that um, everyone would say, well, that's not a realistic solution. So really what we have to do is we have to look at, I like to think of it like a three-legged stool. Uh, we need to reduce expenses. We have to have some cuts. Uh, and I will tell you as, as someone relatively new to state uh, office that there are places that we can reduce expenses to make our government run more efficiently, uh, to take costs out of the infrastructure of our government. Um, I think our social service organizations have been cut very heavily over the past few years. People hear cuts, they think automatically there's more of that. Um, I don't think we can cut them anymore. But I, I will tell you my own office, I cut my budget 10%. And I, I did it by doing nothing drastic, literally by, as people moved out of my office for other jobs or to retire, we just didn't replace those people. We consolidated departments, we've cross-trained people, we brought outside services in-house, we've cut our budget 10%. Um, I turned a million dollars back to taxpayers just at the end of last fiscal year, and my budget this year is several million dollars lower. So it, it can be done through outstate government. And that money can then be used and freed up to go back to help people who really need those state funds. Uh, I do think we'll have to look at uh, tax increases of some sort. But as I said, we can't raise it enough to get out of the mess that we are in. So we must look for some reforms that will help our, our businesses be more cost competitive so that our businesses will invest, um, add jobs, put people back to work, because people working pay taxes. Businesses that are growing, with revenue growing, pay more taxes. And the solution really is, um, the big solution is revenue growth in the state through a growing economy and people putting people back to work. Illinois problem um, doesn't just end at the 2016 budget. Um, there is a more serious problem, um, the pension deficit. Uh, what is the amount and what needs to be done? The current total of our unfunded pension liabilities right now in the state is a little bit over 110, it's about $111 billion right now. Um, again, this is a long-term problem. This, is, this has been building for decades. Uh, this is a result of promises made by politicians and leaders in our state on both sides of the aisle, both parties are involved, uh, with, and they never funded it. And so now, you know, we, we are at a point where we just cannot continue to ignore the fact that we have promised retirements to a lot of people and we do not have the money to pay that going forward. Right now, for those people who are currently retired, we are okay. But for people new in their career who are expecting pensions, we won't be able to fund those if we don't do something different going forward. Uh, we are currently putting in and funding pensions out of our current year budget every year and that number goes up so it eats up more and more of our existing budget uh, and it makes it harder for us to pay for current services. So what we really need is we need a constitutional solution to and reform for pension. Uh, I think we need to pro we need to make sure that we are in a position to pay everything that's been promised um, because a promise is important and, and being a state that keeps our promises is critical. But we need to move on to a long-term solution that I think will involve uh, some kind of choices for people in plans. Um, I know most businesses has moved to a 401k type defined contribution plans versus defined benefit plans. I think those are the kind of things that we have to look at in the future. Uh, but I do believe we have to protect what's been earned. Uh, we have to keep the promises that have been made and we have to f work together, legislature, has to work together to find a solution that will get us on a sustainable path so that we have the money 
to pay what has been promised to people going forward. As we conclude the interview, do you have any last words? Uh, I'd just like to thank you for your time today and say what a pleasure it's been really to go out and meet so many wonderful people throughout the whole Asian American community. Uh, particularly enjoyed my trip to the Korean Cultural Center this morning. Uh, I learned a lot. and uh, It was very interesting for me to see, uh, as someone who studied history growing up, uh, my parents grew up during World War II, and as I mentioned, my father served in the Korean War uh, in the U.S. Navy, uh, to see the Korean history side of that. And uh, it makes me want to go pick up a book and learn more about it. And uh, just what a remarkable transformation uh, Korea has made in the 50 years since those wars, uh, and really becoming just a booming uh, mecca of economic activity. Something we can all learn from and how uh, a very short number of years you can really turn around uh, an economy. It's a good thing for us to remember in Illinois when we're facing all these issues. Controller Munger, it was very pleasure to interview you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>